नमस्कार वेलकम टू द शो सोशल डिस्कोर्स विद ध्वनी आई एम ध्वनी जैन फाउंडर ऑफ कर्मा फाउंडेशन एंड योर होस्ट फॉर दिस एंगेजिंग सीरीज वेर एन वी वुड डिस्कस अबाउट सोशल इश्यूज दैट अफेक्ट आवर डेली लाइफ एंड ऑल्सो डिस्कस आइडियाज टू बिल्ड अ मोर इंक्लूसिव सोसाइटीज थ्रू आवर कलेक्टिव एक्शंस एंड एज वी कॉल इन इंडिया थ्रू आवर कर्मा today we are here to talk about reimagining societies through new media media is called the fourth pillar of democracy with the rise of new media particularly the digital and social media the society has actually been revolutionized in the sense that it has provided every individual with a platform to express their opinions freely which i feel is amazing because every voice matters However this has a few challenges in terms of maintaining peace law and order at times but we need to maintain a balance and use this powerful tool for social good we are truly living in the age of digital media with the rise of a number of apps social media websites etc for people to communicate influence and engage with each other and to have a discussion on such an important topic we are glad to have with us mr apramya radhakrishna ceo and co-founder of kuapp india's very own micro blogging app an engineer from nit suratkal with an mba from iim ahmedabad apramya worked with jones lang lesal for a few years before embarking on his entrepreneurial journey having co-founded the cab aggregator taxi for sure that was acquired by ola in 2015 apramya has since then turned into a serial entrepreneur he founded vocal in 2017 to cater to vernacular audiences in india with a keen eye for business and the startup ecosystem apramya is also an angel investor in over 35 startups including vogo third wave yolo bus an academy open bank etc Welcome to the show, Apramya. It is indeed our pleasure to have you as a guest in the show. And like all of us know, that Ku is the latest Indian app which has made noise all around, and it is rightly called the Voice of India. And as a proud Indian, I would really like to know more about the app as well as your motivation behind starting this venture. Yeah. So. um post taxi for sure i was i started wondering about you know what's the next most impactful business that uh, one can run right and uh, it usually uh, goes by some macro uh, you know uh, things that are happening already that you can ride on right uh, so one such thing was uh, you know everybody getting access to smartphones and everybody getting access to internet through the smartphones and um if you looked at all the apps that were around uh, basically you know they were driving up consumption of content uh, but nothing really empowered the new users on the internet right uh, so if you look at the english world uh, the products that actually empowered us and made us a lot better or accelerated our personal growth are the ones that allowed us to search for information like google are uh the ones that allowed us to express oneself like you know an instagram for our lifestyle twitter for uh, thoughts and opinions uh whatsapp allowed us to communicate with each other communication with one another uh irrespective of distance uh and connecting with new people right so linkedin uh and various others allowed us to connect around a use case which is for for example linkedin is professional so it allowed us to widen our connections in the professional world so for people to get empowered it is not just consumption of con- content it is also about all these uh, products that enable you to show who you are to the world and that was uh, missing uh, in local language and local language audience uh, basically will take a long time to get comfort in using the english uh, first apps that are there so uh, hence we started thinking about building and uh, vocal was our first uh, product which allows voice question answer 
in that journey uh, we found that you know expressing thoughts and opinions uh, that are there in one's mind is also absent on the internet uh, in local languages especially so we wanted to give a voice to every indian uh, irrespective of the language they know and uh, that has uh, gone very well as in now uh, we are basically connecting uh, india deeper uh, india to every person irrespective of where they live what language they speak and the same concept applies to other countries where there are a lot of local languages so very very excited about the journey oh that's very interesting starting from vocal where you focused on the vernacular languages and then starting with the new app ku so like you said ku provides us the option of voicing our opinions and to air our concerns in our local dialects but do you think that will somehow inhibit people from different areas or people speaking different languages to communicate with each other you know social media is a very powerful tool for influencing and to engage with people now if we restrict we provide an option to speak in one's own language so how would a north indian probably communicate with a south indian do you have some provisions for that as well yeah in everyday life uh, you know let's let's take an example of somebody living in you know uh, hasan in karnataka that person is actually not bothered about what's happening in bihar or rajasthan or uttar pradesh they are actually only bothered about what's happening in hasan 90% of the time and another 10% of the time they are bothered about what's happening in karnataka and the only thing that they are bothered about nationally is something that the central ministry or you know some a uh, well known person whether it's bollywood politics cricket does right uh, so so every day uh, attention is to what is happening around me and what will affect my life uh, it is less about you know just gathering information about every state irrespective right so the uh, person sitting in bihar is not interested in talking to the karnataka guy karnataka guy is not interested in talking to the gujarat guy right so that is what is you know truly happening on the ground right and only some people uh, let's say the top 1000 people of india uh, who want to talk to the whole country will want to and that also we've created a feature called multilingual queuing which allows people to uh, post in multiple languages at, at once so from the creator side we've solved it at a con side there are very few people who are interested in too many things like they, they don't care about what's happening across the world also yeah that's true i mean that is unfortunate that uh, we have been into regionalism more than nationalism but that is the reality of the indian scene and to cater to those audiences it was important definitely So Abraham I I know that you have already launched in Nigeria where uh, it was much required so what are your future plans where else do you plan to take it to the international market So every country that has as a, a local culture local language and has a need for you know uh, having their own digital ecosystem right so i think all of these uh, aspects will drive us to uh, enter a country so for example southeast asia there are lots of countries uh, africa there are lots of countries eastern europe south america all with local culture local language right so any country that requires this we will enter that country but you don't wish to get into all the markets immediately Only the who is available? Local languages. No, Ku is available everywhere. As in across the world, anybody can download Ku. But our okay. idea is to connect a country deeper, right? Uh, connecting the English world across the world, Twitter has already done. So that is something that we are not going and saying we will also do the same. What hasn't been done in the social media net, uh, you know, uh, vertical or industry. is basically connecting every country deeper and connecting people irrespective of language that is an unsolved problem and that is the problem that we are trying to solve oh that's wonderful 
And since you have mentioned Twitter in your answer, so I would get to the latest, all the hoo-hala that is going around the social media sites, the new IT rules. So would you like to throw some light on the new IT rules and particularly the intermediary platform status and how who is adapting to the new rules so that they are in compliance with the Indian rules? And also when you go to the international market, do you face the similar challenges of the local laws? Yeah, so as in the, the guidelines is basically to make sure that, you know, internet and social media is a safe place, uh, right? It makes uh, platforms behave a little more responsibly uh, because, you know, what happens is just like on the streets, uh, uh, there are traffic rules. 99% uh, will follow, 1% will break the rules. Similarly, and those who break the rules create chaos they have to be caught and fined so that they behave better. So yeah. online also similar thing has to happen. There are 99% who are using it well, right? Who won't uh, spread hate, who won't spread false news. All of that 99% are doing. It's the 1% who basically uh, are creating the nuisance. And yeah. it is for uh, it is to manage them that uh, guidelines are essential and it will only make you know, social media a much better place. Uh, so that's my uh, take on that. And how how is school adapting to the new rules and how are we in compliance with them? All, all the guidelines, the uh, you know, required guidelines, we were the first one to comply before uh, the deadline. Um, we... We've also been able to, you know, uh, do a lot of India First features. So we are very, very... India first, right? We will build a social net what India wants. And nobody else will build that, right? Like, you know, why would somebody else sitting in some other country take an India first approach to their product? Only an Indian entrepreneur will take an India first approach to the product. So that is what we are building. And, you know, uh, we, are, we are compliant to the local laws. We are an India registered company. So, you know, any company that is registered in India follows local laws. Uh, so it's it's a no-brainer for us to be following it, uh, actually. So true. So like you said, there are always people who would keep breaking the rules and everything. I think it is possible to maintain that balance and uh, basically the balance between freedom of speech and expression and the responsibility of maintaining unity and integrity of the nation. How can we ensure that is actually happening at the grassroots level. It is very difficult, but still we need it. Yeah, I think freedom of expression is paramount. Like, you know, we exist because the voices that didn't speak English weren't getting representation on the internet, right? That's the premise with which who has been formed. So we will never go against that. So we'll spoil everybody, irrespective of language. So we're democratizing more than anybody else has done before, right? So that is that is paramount. Uh, as far as you know, uh, obeying the law of land so that, you know, the integrity of the country or integrity of an individual person is not uh, taken for granted uh, is very, very important, right? Uh, because, you know, at the end of it, to build a successful social media ecosystem in a country, there are three pillars. One is the user who is the first. If he's not there, nobody is there. Next is the government and social media platform. All three need to coexist to make it a successful social media uh, ecosystem or you know an environment for people to be able to feel free about coming and expressing themselves, right? Uh, so transparency uh, and consistency are two key things to take care of. Right? You can you be consistent in your behavior as a social media platform and as the government and as a user, and can you be transparent about the actions that you take, right? Uh, and have a constant dialogue. So as soon as one of the three pillars becomes more powerful than the other, or more than the other, the other two lose trust in the one that is taking uh, taking up more power. So I think it's a constant dialogue and balance between the three pillars that will forever have to exist, 
it it's not a okay i've set everything today in stone and that is the only thing that matters no so there will always be it is an evolving process because you know technology uh, is an evolving uh, process as well developing technology as well as you know uh, our our whole social bit is also changing what happened ago may not be accepted today. what is accepted today might not have been accepted 100 years ago so we are an evolving society so we'll we'll have to keep having constant dialogue absolutely that is so important and we have seen how the rise of social media has actually given rise to citizen journalism and it, that is exactly what's happening which definitely has its pros and cons so i would like to ask you what do you think are the benefits of this growing trend of citizen journalism or do you think it is um, good for the society for the country or it is harmful how do you take it no i think um... anything in life uh, when done with the right motive is good uh, anything done with the wrong motive is now if you're doing ju- citizen journalism with a bad intention uh, of course it's going to be bad but ho- hopefully most people uh, 99% of the people who do citizen journalism will do it with the right intent uh, and hence it is only going to make us better right and it is up to the society the social media company and the government to keep filtering out what is bad for for its own society right uh, which citizen journalism is good and which is not so good so that is something again it's evolving so everything is evolving in social media nothing is exactly yeah, and uh, the intention is also very subjective what is good for me might not be good for somebody else so how yeah. can we ensure that we use the power of social media for community good and to strengthen our nation strengthen our community because social media is very powerful very very powerful it has the power to influence we have seen how it has influenced even the national elections in some of the countries so how can we ensure that it strengthens the community yeah so it, overall i think the power of social media is more positive than negative right there was a time when the common man never had a voice that is not the place to be right so today we've got so much freedom anybody can log in anybody can say anything is a great power to have for for the normal person right and be heard by anybody like somebody uh, living in chitradurga could probably be able to uh, get his voice heard by the chief minister of the state which would have never happened otherwise so i think we're all in a better place than we were before definitely uh now will there be bad elements could we tackle it how do we tackle it you know there are some uh some things that we should frame uh you know whether what is the process of fact checking how do we go about it uh you know can uh, the community that is on the platform itself be actively involved to make this happen so th- there are all of these things that one needs to look at right so uh i think we are better off overall uh, and to learn how to manage and overcome you know the the any small negatives that might happen uh, because of social media that's so true because uh, the society can never be completely free of fault fault lines will always remain you just have to keep dealing with it So from yeah. now at Karma we our vision is to build an inclusive and participatory society which is at the which is a core value of our organization. So how do you think that uh, the social media or the platforms like who can help in realizing this utopian dream? Yeah so I think you know whoever wants to be part like social media is just a reflection of offline world right? uh people exist in the offline world they have an address uh physical address they have a you know uh personality they are known by certain people what social media does is translates it into online world right you have an address which is a handle you have a personality which is based on what you say uh the only thing that gets accelerated or uh, improved is in the offline world your ability to meet thousand people is very limited but in the online world thousand people you can meet in one day right 
so hence uh, you know whatever is happening off- offline including your organization can get a boost uh, in in a big way small way whatever way based on what you want to communicate how many people believe in you so i think it's about developing each one network separately right uh, so can you find people who believe in what you do yes there will definitely be people so is it easier to connect online on a platform like zoom which you know uh, helps connect india deeper with local languages yes right so is it better to be on ku and developing this community versus doing it offline obviously right so i think yes. yeah so i think it, it, there is a lot of potential to use ku and make sure that you know uh, whether it's your organization uh, or anybody else's they can all come and uh, make use of ku to uh, develop their thoughts to, you know work on their goals uh, make sure that their uh you know their beliefs are uh, reaching you know millions of people absolutely thanks for sharing your insights on such an important topic of premier and uh, bef- like till now we have discussed all about the digital media the power of digital media and everything But before i let you go i have one last question for you and that is specially for the younger audience that we have so we would like to know about your entrepreneurial journey specifically the startup ecosystem and your piece of advice to the budding entrepreneurs now so if there was a time to dream about something this is the best time right uh, as in don't it's not about dreaming about money or anything that's not the dream right the, the dream is about can you create an impact uh, on more people than yourself right uh, we're all uh, extremely focused on you know what we want to achieve and all of those things which is primary right but if anybody wants to leave a deeper impact on the society this is the best time right uh, and using technology using you know the connections that you can make through technology there are for example uh, you know so many d2c brands right uh, direct to consumer brands uh, are being formed in competition to the large fmcg brands right all that is happening because they can make a presence and connect with consumers directly on social media right they can define their personality and hence people follow their brands right so there is never a better time to start up uh, zomato went ipo paytm is going ipo so i think you know we've just about uh hit the decade where indian startup ecosystem after the last decade and a half has been invested uh as in there's a lot of money that has been invested entrepreneurs who have spent time in the ecosystem to build it you know all of this is culminating with you know some of the biggest ipos of the world right uh and with with those ipos happening i think you know there will be uh, more aggression in creating companies from scratch for the indian market and there will be multiple of those companies which will go global and make a mark across the world so i think uh, you know it's it's never it, it's the best time as long as you have a passion you uh, build something for users and you can solve a deep enough problem uh, in a very very uh, nice manner as in uh, a manner in which uh, users love you uh, you know this is the best time to start up as you rightly said this is the right time to explore your potential to dream big and fly high so pramya what yep. is your quote of life goal of life <laughs> quote 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 your life quote any quote, message okay. you have for our audience yeah, so i believe in you know getting getting better every day like you know the one thing that human uh race has done is evolve right thousands of years millions of years we've only evolved uh can we get better at an individual level can we get better every day can we get 1% better uh the day we get stagnated in one place or you know get worse than what we were uh yesterday i think it's a it's a sign of worry 
can we keep getting better in whatever choice right it could be business it could be health it could be you know uh, just being able to you know spend time by yourself you know whatever uh, chosen field or chosen aspect of life it is can you do 1% better every day that will compound and it will make you a very different person in just a year or two that's such a beautiful thought i think if all of us start to living that every day we could actually make a beautiful world together so thank you pramya for taking out time from your busy schedule it was really a pleasure to have you and to hear out your insights we are really grateful to you thanks a lot thanks a lot bhai thank you so much so ladies and gentlemen stay tuned for the next episode of social discourse with bhani till then keep spreading positivity Thank you.